Now doing something with these element stiffness matrices and putting them into this big global system initially seems kind of a little odd. Um, and it makes more sense after you do this a number of times. So we kind of want to get through this and then we can come back and look at what the meaning of it is all later. But keep this overall format of the element stiffness matrix in mind, both of them because of the members being identical also look numerically identical, but we've got this EA over L of the member and 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1 in the matrix. And remember that what that's doing is relating member end force displacement relationships at the ends of the, the member. Right? And so what we're going to do though is remember we've got a structure that has two members lined up with each other and our degrees of freedom are such that we have a joint at each end and a joint in the middle. And so the displacements that we're monitoring globally are these displacements D1, D2, D3 that if we know those we know everything else that's going on in the structure. Right now global system capital letters local system lowercase. Right, that's a key thing here and what we want to do is take those member stiffness matrices that we had before that were expressed in the local coordinate system lowercase but with the prime that's what that really meant was in the local and transform them into uh, something that's still at the member level but that is in the global format. So we're making a transformation from here to there is one of our first key steps. Right? And then after we do that then we're going to assemble these all together and when we get it into the member stuff into the big global format then all we actually have to do is just add these together to get to this big um, global st uh, structural stiffness matrix. Right? So just to recap real quick, we start with a little local member level and it's only in its own member format, transform it into still a member matrix but in the global format and then we can assemble the big structural one by assemblage of really just adding all of these little ones up. Right? We can't do that initially because of course things don't line up. For instance, when you look at the member one, its first degree of freedom here at the left lines up perfectly with the global one. So let's put a one there. right? And so put a one here too because this is a symmetric matrix. Now it's local two also, hey when little x prime two is positive that's the exact same value as big capital D two. So we'll line those up also. And then we come down here to the to the other one, we'll do the same kind of thing, except for here, it's x2, okay, that lines up, its first local degree of freedom lines up with the global 2, and then the 3 lines up, the second column lines up with the global 3. Right Now this, this really does seem kind of weird and, and bizarre, and what are we going to do if we don't have a perfect matchup between all those? We'll handle that in another um, example. This time every, the local stuff lines up um, directly with the, the global system and that makes everything much easier. Now in the big global format we got one, two, three degrees of freedom here. And so all we're going to do is transform, take this and pull it over into this global format. Right, so 1, 1 will line up right here at K1 and then we've got K2 and because of how, oops, it's not K2, that's still K1 and then that becomes K1, right? Yep, those are all K1s and member 1 is not attached to degree of freedom 3 so you end up with zeros over there. Likewise when you pull the other one around you'll have K2 showing up directly and then that member's not attached to degree of freedom 1 so we have those zeros. Now notice again 3 by 3 system that goes along with 1, 2, 3 of those. We All we've really done in this very simple case is just added zeros where that member was not attached in the, the global uh, system. It's attached 
indirectly through another member, but not directly. And same thing over here. Right now, then when we want to, when we've got them in this global format, that means that our big K then is just a direct assemblage of all the little ones. But only when you've got it into this global format can you do this simple summation. And notice now what's going to happen is we've got a direct, straightforward way to put all these together. I guess that's the wrong color. Let's be consistent in the color of the brackets. That we take this entry here plus that one, which is still K1. That one plus that one, that's sum is also K1, negative K1, and 0 plus 0 is 0. Here, second row, minus K1, and then we get a K1 plus a K2, and then we get a 0 and a minus K2, and 0 plus 0, and 0, and then minus K2, and then 0 and K2. Notice this very direct way to assemble the global stiffness matrix from the element pieces, which is why it's called the direct stiffness method. Right? In our case, since all of our little individual k values were identical, then we could really factor that out, and we can really sort of put the little bow on this. We get 966.6 repeating tips per inch, and then we would get then as a matrix Looks like we don't have enough space in the paper, but actually we do, because we're just going to get a 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, and then 0, minus 1, and 1 again, would be our global stiffness matrix. What the heck are we going to do with that? You'll see that coming up in the next part.